about a um, legally binding agreement that is to be expected from uh, Paris um, at COP21 and what element should be in a, a legally binding agreement under international law. But before I go into that, let me give you a little bit of background. When we um, parties negotiated a um, next step beyond the Kyoto Protocol, we entered into this Durban Platform uh, decision uh, adopted in 2011. And that mandate, that decision, um, asks parties to negotiate a agreement a legal in nature, which is applicable to all parties and which covers all thematic areas of climate change regime, which are mitigation, adaptation, finance, technology development and transfer, capacity building, transparency of action and support. And what we are focusing here today is what that agreement, legal in nature, would look like. Under international law, a legally binding agreement means you can have you can have a treaty under Vienna Convention um, of Law of Treaties. That means a treaty that is negotiated between multiple parties. So a, a, a form of that agreement can come as a protocol or a treaty or a convention or even you can call it an agreement. But what is most important is when you look, in, look at uh, the agreement, whether it is legally binding or not, is the obligations within it and the provisions to actually enforce those obligations. And obligations within the uh, Paris Agreement, if it is to be most effective and the highest, uh, has highest possible legal rigor, means that it will have uh, obligations for uh, conduct and obligations for result as well. Obligations for conduct means parties will have obligations to uh, communicate a, a pledge on mitigation, on finance, and even on adaptation, and uh, maintain that pledge uh, over time to raise their ambition. An obligation for result means parties obliged to achieve th those pledges, achieve those targets through uh, multiple of actions. So if as I mentioned, if the Paris agrees, Agreement to be more successful, there should be obligations for action as well as result. And another key element of a legally binding agreement is rules around transparency of action and transparency of support, as well as rules around accountability of those um, actions that parties take. And the last point on a legally binding agreement, a key point on legally binding, binding agreement, is um, provisions for compliance. What happens if I don't achieve my target? What happens if I don't keep to my obligation? And that means you have, have to have some kind of provisions to ensure enforcement or ensure compliance um, under the agreement. And this is a, these are the key elements that um, needs to have for a most effective uh, agreement that has the highest legal rigor under international law. But the negotiations continue. Parties are trying to make compromises, trying to find the middle ground. Some parties don't like to have, for example, the highest um, enforcement mechanism. They want to have non-punitive, uh, non-judicial, non-intrusive, facilitative mechanisms to ensure compliance. So we don't know how the agreement is going to look like in Paris, but these are the key elements to look at if, the, uh, if you are following the legally bindingness discussion uh, in, in Paris. <laughs>